Create with France Sydney. Create the life you want. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 60. I think we are correct, 60 episodes. What on earth is going on? I hope that you are getting used to this podcast now and you know it's just a way to get to chat about uh, a lot of things that have to do with creating the life that you deserve, the life that you were born to live. And one of the ways that we can create this life is to uh, remove what we call emotional blocks or anything that is there to hinder us, to make us feel confused or overwhelmed or to procrastinate and to have these blocks all the time that just, just don't allow us to move forward, which is why people go for coaching, for therapy, for CBT. Everyone has a different way of looking for a resolution. And of course, uh, I have to say that hypnosis is one of the best ways of doing it. Why? Because through hypnosis, you can go into a really deep state of trance, of relaxation, and really talk to your subconscious mind and then receive very powerful suggestions. And if your mind is accepting those suggestions because you achieve this clarity, then it's all good. And of course, some people wonder exactly what is hypnosis? Is it dangerous? What is it? So I thought I would do an episode very short just to explain what hypnosis is. Stay tuned. So personally, I have been trained and qualified as a clinical hypnotherapist and there are loads and loads of different qualifications. So I'm not going to tell you who is qualified to do what. I'm just going to tell you there is no law in England saying that you have to have a degree to be a hypnotist or a hypnotherapist. There are lots of diploma courses. So there are different levels of so preparations, qualifications, and of course there is something called like um, uh, very good practice. And this is uh, actually controlled by the PSA, which is a professional standard agency uh, under which are all the nurses and doctors, dentists, etc., chiropractors, and of course also hypnotherapists. And um, this is IFEA accredited with their own course with the Complementary and Natural Healthcare Council, which I am. So I registered with them and with a PSA. However, uh, qualifications, papers, all good. Just tell me, Franz, what is hypnotherapy? So it's just a type of uh, communication. It's a way of talking that is directed to you and to your imagination, and it helps you to get some changes in the way you perceive things, in the way you sense and you feel something, and in the way you think and the way that you behave. So it's something really gentle uh, and certainly not dangerous because it helps you to discuss what you want to change in your life, what is your desired goal from a therapeutic point of view, and you can ask it all sorts of questions before and even during the in the hypnosis session you will be giving a little bit of your medical history of your lifestyle and ideas so you, you want to give an idea to the therapist of what's going on in your life so we're not going to just start in out of the blue we're not a prophet we're not a, a magician or, or, or a witch or anything we're not reading a tarot card they are a medical professional and we just want to know what's going on in your life okay so there's nothing really dangerous about that either and also you will see that there are a lot of problems that you can tackle with hypnosis and uh, you use your own willpower so it's always a consensual yes i want to work with this to um, drive motivation up to reach the goal that you have for example you might have anxiety or problem sleeping or you might think that it's very difficult for example you have a little toddler that is still bedwetting and maybe the toddler is five years old and is still bedwetting so you might use hypnosis for that you might have issues with I don't know something like um, weight loss you keep eating and eating and you can't stop and you're not hungry you're eating out of boredom out of frustration it's just a habit and you don't seem to understand why this is going on so literally the ways you can use hypnosis to help your life are millions um, you can even have some minor skin conditions that are coming directly because you are stressed uh, for example, confidence can, can affect your, uh, your, the way you're feeling. And so even your performance when you're doing sports, music, concerts, or uh, for example, giving a talk or a workshop in public can be very different if you had hypnosis to understand how to remain calm and remain in control. And of course, it's very, very useful to use hypnosis 
if you wanted to have relief of perceived pain, especially chronic pain, because I remember doing a course of CBT for chronic pain a couple of years ago with the Open University, and it was really interesting to learn that um, people who suffer from chronic pain, they have like um, a, a quite a high threshold, right? But uh, there is something called the habit, and when they start feeling pain, their brain is, um, how would you say, recording much higher than actually is subjectively. And so you have to kind of break that path. And there are special groups that uh, are there with facilitators uh, to facilitate people, to teach them how exactly the brain plasticity works so they can reduce this pain just by using the way of thinking about this pain. And one of the examples uh, that I vaguely remember was about people who couldn't walk much because they had, uh, for example, arthritis and joint problems. And um, I can't remember which type exactly it was, but I do remember that they, they were able to, to say, okay, I have this pain, but I still want to walk. I, I'm not going to have this pain ruin my day. And so they were changing their process by talking about it using CBT, and by lowering, um, actually putting up a threshold and then realizing that the pain was actually lower because by walking more, they were actually less stiff and a lot of the pain that they had was actually caused by being more immobile and uh, by their muscles being very stressed and stiff. Of course, this is just a one-off example, so do not uh, now come to me and say, oh, it's impossible, you're not seeing all the cases. Of course, this is not a program that talks about pain and we're talking just about hypnosis in general and one of the many instances where it can be used, the doctor can refer you to have hypnosis to lower your pain. This is normal and it happens to a lot of people and there are people who use hypnosis for having surgery without any um, anesthetic. Uh, I think one very famous case has been documented of a guy that had brain surgery and with hypnotic uh, uh, abilities. So he was hypnotized, the, the person was there and he had a, a wonderful operation and no need of any anesthetic whatsoever. Must have been an incredible experience and certainly something I didn't want to do myself. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so another thing that you might be very uh, comfortable with and uh, familiar with, hypnosis is also used with uh, the pain to manage the pain that comes from IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome, which is not a specific disease, but a combination of uh, lots of symptoms that we don't know where exactly are stemming from. It could be anxiety, it could be um, gut dysbiosis or anything. And so there is evidence to support the use of uh, hypnosis in this condition for adults and for children. And so the National Institute for Health and Clinical Guidance, which is a NICE, recommend the NHS should consider referring patients for hypnotherapy if the irritable bowel is persistent and is not responding to simple prescribed medicine. How beautiful. That is very, very good. So just make sure that your hypnosis uh, therapist is registered with the um, C and a H C and so that's this is for the UK I don't know about your country wherever you're listening from but it's just so good to know they have reached a center standard they haven't done like a weekend course and they go out in the world and they have no idea what we're doing so just make sure of that so the basic for hypnosis is that the subject must want to, to be hypnotized you cannot force anyone to be hypnotized because you have to relax to focus on yourself and unless you really want to do you will not be able to do anything like that so you can't force a person to think of something uh, of course there must be an exception right if you say do not think of a pink elephant you will start thinking about a pink elephant but that's i wouldn't call that hypnosis so um, normally speaking no hypnotist that i know of even very famous stage hypnotist has any power whatsoever to hypnotize people because when they do those very special stage shows, only the people who want to be hypnotized, who are ready and they're very happy to do so, come in and do whatever, and even more than hypnotists will want them to do, because they want to, because they are primed to do so, they love doing it, they want to be in the center of their attention, and they want to use your mind for that and to feel this power. So the more you believe, the greatest the result. Why? Because your brain is an amazing, 
wonderful, efficient machine. They will create whatever you believe is true. And we'll always find that there are very good things to sustain your own point of view. And so if you believe you can be hypnotized, of course, you will be. And if you believe, if you believe that it is absolutely impossible to hypnotize you, you're correct as well. This will be impossible because you don't want to. Uh, here and there on the internet, sometimes you read people saying, well, I don't want to be hypnotized in case I will be asked to reveal a secret like what I do at home when I'm on my own or my credit card number or anything like that. Well, actually, no, this is not possible. I wish it was, you know, it would be so fun. I just ask you to give me your account number and I can log in and get all your money. How wonderful. No, it is not possible at all because you, when you hear the hypnotist talking to you, you have your free will, your agency is completely there and you can comply with whatever they say, for example, relax or go down the steps or tell me your biggest fear, whatever the question is. But you do not have to comply with anything. At any point during the hypnotic session, you can actually open your eyes, stand up and go for a walk, come back and that will not be impossible, it will be very easy, very natural, you can blow your nose, you can have some water, you can move around, you can do whatever you want. But a hypnotist cannot make you do anything and if he does ask you something that you think is not good for you to do, you simply don't do it. And if it's something dangerous or, I don't know, something that will be illegal, you still simply get up and walk out because this is not a proper hypnotherapist, obviously he's not a serious person, but he has no power whatsoever to make you reveal any secret. And I know this because, um, not only because obviously the training, but because um, one of my trainers, Mike Mandel, who has an academy, he has worked uh, with forensics, with the police for many, many years uh, out there in Canada, and he has recounted so many cases of working with people, and the police was asking him, can you read the mind, can you control, and no, he can't, although he's been a hypnotist for 20 years, 30 years, he's, he's amazing, but he cannot do that. So don't worry about revealing your secrets uh, while you are in hypnosis, it's just a really good sense of relaxation, the same that you will reach if you're watching television or you're laying on the beach or you're just listening to some music or doodling about, it's just a, a fitter alpha, whatever you want to call it, state of relaxation where you are more likely to listen to instructions. But this will not bend anything that you will do because your actions are always your own responsibility. In fact, nobody on earth can force you to do anything. And this is a principle of the whole universe. Whatever you do is always because of your decisions and you decide, well, I've got a gun on my face, they're gonna blow it. If I don't do something, then you still have a choice. You don't do something or you do it and you get blown up. But there is always a choice. Nobody can make you choose something else just by telling you. So that's a, is out of the way. And uh, also another thing about getting stuck. Some people have this weird idea that you can be in hypnosis and remain in hypnosis and being stuck. Guys, you watch too many movies, okay? Stop watching Dracula and horror movies. In real life, a hypnotherapist cannot make you stuck. All he can do is make you so relaxed that in the end, as you go down these lovely stairs and you're talking about nice things and feel amazing, you might even fall asleep, which does happen maybe with a tiny amount of, of patients. But this will not be mean stuck. If you fall asleep, very simply, when you wake up, you are back to your normal day and you might even think, why did I fall asleep? I was just there talking. You were just very relaxed and maybe you were a little bit tired, but you're certainly not stuck. And hypnosis is just talking to you and then listening to you, listening to the responses and use very powerful words to elicit a state of happiness and relaxation and yet dig in to find out what, what happened, why, where, and what happened to you that made you as you are today, what your fears or anxiety or whatever there is. And also the last observation was some people, very few luckily, are convinced that um, there are lots of practices that should not be done because they will attract evil spirits or maybe mind control or who knows what. Well, whether you are a Christian or not, if you 
believe that uh, by being in trance you are attracting evil spirit you have to realize first of all that a natural person when is about to wake up or about to go to sleep or maybe watching a very boring movie or um, university lecture is in a state of trance so how is that possible that every time we we doze off a little bit get bored and our mind goes a little bit far away that's trance how is it possible that every time an evil spirit comes inside us uh, you know if you want to believe in the scriptures then you have to understand that uh, an evil spirit cannot dwell in a clean space and when you're doing hypnosis you are really cleansing your place you are taking care of all the rubbish all the toxins all the evil whatever is bad inside you that was left there by the actions of others by your own thinking by patterns and you're really clean and refreshed not because you're doing a ritual cleansing such as you would do maybe in the christian world when you have a baptismal uh, service but really it's like a cleansing of what you don't need because a lot of us have what we call a burden a weight that we carry for many many years it could be the weight that you cannot be the person that you always wanted to be it could be a very bad weight of having been neglected or not loved, having been rejected, having failed, or having contemplated the divorce of your own parents, or maybe some violence in your life, rape, abuse, all sorts of stuff. And sometimes we seem to be unable to move on because we're carrying the weight, the memories, and the, the meaning of all these memories in our life. And that is the bad thing so that we are carrying all of this weight that we should not be carrying anymore we should just sort out process set aside give our learning and upgrade and say okay i've learned this but now i need to live my life and that's where hypnosis comes really really useful because it's a really gentle tool to go down into your inner mind and to explore safely and calmly what's going on why you have created a belief and how you can get rid of it so don't worry about the spirits coming to you because you know they're not coming through hypnosis maybe you will find another way if you want to be possessed but it will not be through a hypnotic session which is designed to help you so if you were thinking of having a hypnosis there are two types of hypnosis there are there is hypnosis as such so you close your eyes you will count you know from 10 to 1 and then you start going into the session and then you will count back so if you will count from 10 to 1 you will count again 1 to 10 etc and then there is another type of hypnosis which is called conversational hypnosis where you start by talking and then you realize you're actually in hypnosis because you're feeling more and more like you're really deeply focused on the real meaning of your issue and that's very interesting because it's very very powerful and easy to work with for those who feel that maybe they don't want to close their eyes to begin with but uh, it's really a matter of preferences but in any case what i would say about hypnosis is it really has changed my life i've done so much stuff differently now uh, you know since a few years ago because i had so many sessions on myself and just changing my beliefs and understanding that I am powerful and I can do anything I'm set to do and I can fulfill my potential. So hypnosis has this, together with coaching as well, can really give you an understanding of a huge potential as a human being, an understanding that we are not our past, we are not the bad things that happen to us. We can move on, we can heal, we can change environment, even if it's just the case of changing our inner environment and sometimes the situation outside is not very very good or very pleasant but we can still change how we perceive it and so my hope is that after this episode you will be a little bit more open and more calm about having a hypnotic session and if not you can still get so many great results with coaching if what you need is a little bit more drive a little bit more clarity and having a set strategy and an accountability person right there to help you to propel yourself so you can get what you want instead of faffing around the whole time spreading yourself flat and not doing anything in the end of the day 
So I hope that this episode was useful for you. Thank you so much for being with me and let me just grab my piece of paper with a note so I can tell you what happens next time. I found it. Yes, next time I want to talk about what happens when kindness is in our life and how that affects our brain. And that's very important, something very important to have in our life, kindness. Why is it helpful to be kind and to receive kindness? So let's talk about it in the next episode. By that time, school will be all going in full force for everyone. My art classes are going to be all going. So it's going to be a really great week. And I hope that this is going to be a great week for you, full of preparation for a wonderful autumn or fall, as we call it in the States. And I hope that you will be so eager to keep going with your goals that you started up in the beginning of the year and ready to smash it. So thank you for being with me and I'll talk to you next week. Bye bye. You've listened to Create with Franz Sidney.